from American actors who became governors, the former later elected presidents. The latter, known for the phrase, I'll be back, to Chima and Chinua, two of Africa's most famous authors, who, though not related, by some freaky coincidence, lived in the same house several years apart, and sadly, things did fall apart. To American T. Ribs and German M. Schumacher, Formula One aficionados, born on the same day, from America's first black ballerina to Robert Ballard, from Indian author, teacher of yoga, BKS Inyenga, who reminds us that we're not getting any younger to drama in Bahama and the rumble in the jungle, a killer and a chiller and the thriller in Manila, to Malala and Lilibeth, the former whose son almost sat in a SWAT district from an assassin's bullet, the latter her royal majesty, whose empire, the sun, it was said, never set. Two, the exquisite beauty of our expanding, expansive, and majestic universe. Whatever takes your fancy, there's something for everyone right here, right now. Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sotonye Afiasimama, and this is Today in History for the 12th of January. Coming up in today's Today in History, I gave a clue, a puzzle rather, yesterday, and the puzzle was they were forced to part ways, but not permanently. So that's puzzle number one. A former president from this continent's southernmost country and the war near the Cape. Puzzle number two. Also an entrepreneur who built an empire selling down the river. And of course, lots more. So guys, I'm sure some of you have a clue as to what I'm talking about. But all will be revealed in today's Today in History. So keep watching. 1879 is the year and this was the day that the Anglo-Zulu War began, as the British sought control over Zuland in eastern South Africa. Okay, so this is one of the answers to one of the clues, um, or the answer to one of the clues, um, the war near the Cape. So in the sentence I said, the former president from this continent, southernmost country, and a war near the Cape. So this is a war near the Cape, which happened on this day in 1879. About the former president, we're going to get to that very soon. So the Anglo-Zulu War began on this day, as you can see from this book cover. The Anglo-Zulu War, the history and legacy of the British Empire's conflict with the Zulu Kingdom in South Africa. So guys, on this day in 1879, the Anglo-Zulu War began as the British sought control over Zululand and southern and eastern South Africa. Next, on this day, the year was 1890 and his name was Mordecai Johnson. He is the bloke pictured right here. Mordecai Johnson was born in Paris, Tennessee. So this is not Pahui. But Paris, okay. Um, obviously, the difference is that one has been anglicized or Americanized, if you like. Um, so that happened on this day. Mordecai Johnson was born in Tennessee. He served as the first black president of Howard University, even though it doesn't look black here. Um, for those of you who do not know, there is the rule that if you have a drop of black in you, you're black, you know, no matter how white you, you may look. So anyway, this is Mordecai Johnson, who served as the first black president of Harvard University from 1926 until 19, 
60. Now, this thing about um, race. Now, it's not the same rule in South America. Um, so in South America, if you have a drop of white in you, you're white. So it's not like a universal rule. Okay. And um, in other parts of the world, you're seen as mixed race. You know, in Africa, where I, <clears throat> where I come from, um, if you have a drop of black in you, we don't see you as black. We see you as mixed race. That's the general perception in Africa. To the best of my knowledge, I think it's still the same up till today. Okay. Next is the answer to one of the puzzles earlier, which was a former president from this continent, Southernmost country. Yes, if you guessed it right, his name was P. W. Botha. So this is P. W. Botha pictured here, Prime Minister of South Africa from 1978 to 1984, and President from 1984 to 1989. He was born on this day. Sadly, this guy was a racist to the core. And look at the statement that someone who should know much better made. It says, and I quote, I'm one of those who believe that there is no permanent home for even a section of the Bantu in the white area of South Africa. And the destiny of South Africa depends on this essential point. If the principle of permanent residence for the black man in the area of the white is accepted, then it is the beginning of the end of civilization as we know it in this country. How racist and how sad. You know, these uh, people, our leaders are supposed to be a lot more intelligent than the rest of us. You know, they're supposed to be. That's why they're leaders. That's why they're elected to high office. Now, yes, I do understand the context of the time that he was born and, you know, what the world was like, you know, the race riots in America, how slaves were brought to America. So his mindset, obviously, was like thinking, okay, these are black people that are beneath me. You know, but leaders, you had someone like Nelson Mandela in prison. Did he learn anything from Nelson Mandela? Did he glean anything from him? Did he learn from the American civil rights leaders? Did he see the, even though there were not many, the, the few black su successful people, intelligent black successful people in those days, did he just gloss over these people? Did he not think that they were human beings? Did he not think that they were, that they were equals? You know, it's sad. Was he pandering to the gallery? I think that there's a phrase like that, you know, because um, he wanted to be elected by his people. So he wanted to say what they were thinking, think what they were saying, you know, was he brainwashed? So anyway, um, I don't want to carry on, on this, but yes, he was born on this day and I featured him because I mean, it's not all about, um, what's the right word now? Positivity is not the right word, but I want to be realistic as well, you know, not just portray the positives in history, but also the negatives so that we are realistic about expectations for the future. Because history does tend to repeat itself. I've said that several times in my videos, you know, on this channel. History tends to repeat itself. So we want to make sure that this particular type of history does not repeat itself. Because uh, racism, any form of racism, from black to white or from white to black, should not be condoned. So we are all human beings. It's the same blood that flows in our veins. It's red. There's no such thing as a blue blood, even though obviously the, the, the phrase blue blood is metaphorical. You know, it's a, it, it denotes royalty. But no one has blue blood in their veins. We're all human beings. You know, we all bleed when we're cut. So, you know, this racism thing, you know, the world is moving forward. You know, um, I, I don't want to talk too much about it because, you know, the truth is that we are all equals. That is the truth. You know, some so-called civilizations may be more advanced in advancing quotes. Okay, um, civilizations come and go. If you go through throughout uh, history, the Greek Empire has come and gone. The Roman Empire has come and gone. Okay, there's a few vestiges of the Roman Empire today. Um, so there were, there's a time when Africa ruled the world as well. That has come and gone, and Africa is rising again. So these things are cyclical. That's we need to look at history holistically you know even some of us who are africans and african americans or black people sometimes we look down on ourselves we don't need to 
You don't need to. We're human beings just like the white people and other races in the world. You know, if we work hard, we will succeed just like all the other races. You know, we have very intelligent people just like the other races. So do not sell yourself short if you are a black man or a black woman. Do not sell, sell yourself short. You are capable of achieving the best and the highest office in the land. Whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve. Okay. Yes, again, P.W. Botha was born on this day in 1916. Now, let's do something. Do me a favor, guys. So this is my Today in History video for the 1st of January. Um, go check out my other videos as well. Um, I'm just going to do a very quick scroll so you can see what's happening here. Um, there is a lot, even in this video on the 1st of January. Uh, I'll pause somewhere and show you a few things. Okay, so there is um, a feature here. So go check out what this is about. Um, Cameroon also featured the country in West Africa. We also have Maurice Chestnut, Sophie Okonado, the beautiful Sophie Okonado, Kofi Annan, you know, the late Kofi Annan, Oprah Winfrey, you know, that's interesting, launching January 1st, that has come and gone. Um, Brexit, clearly. So do me a favor, international deadline and all the controversies, you know, this country here feature, featured, <laughs> go check that out as well. Check out my over 300 videos here in my channel. You know, there's something right here, right now for everyone, like I said earlier in my intro. Um, and do me a favor, um, just like, you know, and uh, share my videos to your various social media platforms. So there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's email, um, there's Pinterest, Blogger, Tumblr, there's LinkedIn as well. Um, go check it out, Skyrock Mix and Go. If you're not on these social media platforms, check them out. Also, subscribe, click the notification bell, click all, and you are good to go. Thanks, guys, for your support. So let's carry on with today's Today in History. Next, on this day, this lady, her name is Hattie Ophelia Caraway. She became the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate. So Ophelia Caraway, the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate. You can see her picture here with her gavel. I think that's what it's called. That um, lawyers use, or judges, I guess, um, use in court books here. You know. So again, Hattie Ophelia Caraway became the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate. On this day in 1944, Joe Frazier, Joe Frazier was born. He's also known as Smoking Joe Frazier, considered one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, born in Beaufort, South Carolina. So this is Joe Frazier, who was born on this day in South Carolina. Carolina. Smoking Joe Frazier. Happy birthday. Also, on this day, there was a landmark case, and it's called, or it was called, Sipwell versus Oklahoma. Now, this is the day that the U.S. Supreme Court decision said the state must provide blacks with an equal opportunity to commence the study of law at a state institution at the same time as other citizens. So landmark case, Sipuel. So Sipuel is spelled S-I-P-U-E-L versus Oklahoma. You can Google it up if you want to dig deeper into this case. Landmark case on this day in 1948. Now the final puzzle is answered here, which was an entrepreneur who built an empire selling down the river. This is an easy one, isn't it? Um, well, the entrepreneur, Jeff Bezos pictured here. And what about the selling down the river? Well, his business outfit is called Amazon. And you know Amazon, it's named his business after the Amazon River. So this is American entrepreneur Jeff Bezos, who played a key role in the growth of e-commerce. Born on this day in 1964. So happy birthday, Jeff Bezos. Currently, I think, Still the richest man in the world, I 
think it was temporarily overtaken not too long ago by um, Elon Musk. Now, this is a bit um, anachronistic because I'm recording this video in February. So um, obviously on this day, the news hadn't broken yet. Okay, so um, so this is kind of like I'm reporting the future, even though um, this is portraying the past, if you like. So um, for those of you who are, well, you, you find out obviously that, um, yes, it's so Elon Musk did overtake um, Jeff Bezos. I don't know if that's still the case today, if Jeff Bezos has gone back to becoming number one. But at the time of recording, which is the 21st of February, I'm really late to do apologize. I'm trying to catch up on my videos. But yes, Jeff Bezos was born on this day in 1964. 2005, on this day, the US space probe Deep Impact was launched. And in July, it shot a 370 kilogram, which is an 810 pound mass, into the nucleus of the comet Tempel 1 in order to study its cometary structure. So 2005 was the year, and the day, of course, was January the 12th. So again, this was the day in 2005 that the US space probe Deep Impact was launched. The idea or the decision to launch this space probe um, was born out of the necessity to study its cometary structure. So the cometary structure of Comet Tempel, so the nucleus of the Comet Tempel 1. Okay, last but not least, sadly, on this day, Haiti was severely damaged by an earthquake. The earthquake was a magnitude 7.0 and it devastated Haiti, especially Port-au-Prince, which is the capital. And it killed more than 200,000 people, leaving more than 1 million people homeless and touching off a massive international relief effort. So this is a picture of the devastation in Haiti 11 years ago. You know, um, sadly, 200,000 people at least lost their lives. I'm sure it was a bit more than that. And over a million people were rendered homeless. This was today in 2010. Now I'm going to end with something. You know, um, I remember doing an article uh, on my blog um, at the time. You know, I had a blog, um, sotoya.com. It doesn't exist anymore because obviously uh, the times have moved on. One, one has to move with the times. Blogs are not as big as they used to be 10, even five years ago. Um, that's why I switched to YouTube. So, and I kind of knew that YouTube was going to grow over time because um, one of the things that I discovered was while I was blogging, um, I started embedding videos to my articles. And now those videos were now ranking on Google. Hence, they were pushing my articles up as well. So I thought, okay, video makes sense because video has to be the next big thing because we're more relatable on video. People would rather watch a video than read a script. I mean, it's common sense. It's quicker, it's more enjoyable, it's more relatable. That's how we interact in the real world. We want to see people's faces, we want to see their reactions. You know, saying we want to see people's faces, I'm not showing my own face, but that's a bit um, ironical. But yeah, as time goes on, obviously, I'm going to show my face. But video is much better than writing. You know, it's much more effective, and time has shown that um, that is true. Okay, so what I was going to share with you is a young guy who who wanted to raise $500 for Haiti, you know, and um, he ended up raising, at the time that this article was written by BBC, he had raised $72,000, more than $72,000. I bet you, if I remember correctly, this guy raised hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars eventually. His name is Charlie Simpson. Seven years at a time. This was 11 years ago. So he's an 18-year-old today. And um, I wonder where he is today, you know, what he's doing now with his life. You know, like the fact that he was really touched by what was going on in Haiti. You know, I've even Googled up my article to see if it show up, but it didn't show up, yeah. sadly. But, um, yeah, but this was, a, and then this is a video that I used. Okay, so if you can see that, that's Charlie Simpson. 
you know, in the middle of that with his blue t-shirt. You know, it's such a lovely gesture that a young boy would be touched by the suffering of his fellow human beings, even though they were black. You know, a young white boy all the way from England, thousands of miles away, you know, and then he raised this money for charity. You know, it, it's it's a, a very, very laudable thing. You know, his parents must be very proud of him, even up till today. You know, so anyway, on that note, guys, um, we're going to end today's Today in History. Thanks for dropping by. It's a bit of a long one, but you can see that it was necessary. Um, I'll see you again tomorrow, the 13th of January, for another edition of Today in History. Again, thanks for your support. Stay safe. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.